ZX armor piece is the first LEGO Ninjago armor piece that could actually hold swords without using any legal building technique like the original Ninja Hoods did. But there has to be more you can do with this piece than just putting swords in. Wait, what? Karloff's not a ninja? So in this video, I'm going to be experimenting with these ZX armor pieces to see what cool stuff I can make with them. Will they be truly epic or a complete disaster? Let's find out. So before we start tinkering with the ZX armors, let's get the basics right, just as Master Wu would want us to do. The original intention of ZX armor pieces was for the ninja to carry swords around on their minifigures. They could fit two swords crossed over and they looked truly epic when they first came out. In the Wilfilm era, this was kind of the staple ninja armor piece, until we got this legacy head wrap and couldn't fit on the ZX armor anymore. But they did use them recently in the 10 years Golden Legacy Ninja and for Skylar in Ninjago Crystallized. These pieces come in four colors, silver, gold, black, and this silver black thing called gunmetal. Okay, so let's start playing around with these ZX armors and see what we can make. This is Titanium Zane. In all the promotional media and even in the sets, Zane is carrying around two golden sides, despite the fact that he doesn't even carry any kind of weapon around at all in the show, apart from the explosive shurikens built into his new body, but that's besides the point. But Zane needs a way to carry his gear around. So I'm going to put this side into his ZX armor and what do you know it fits. But after a while my side began to look like this. The edges are a bit rough now so try not to do this. So that didn't work out so well let's see what we can do without using illegal building techniques. If you watched my custom Ronin video you would have seen me use this next idea which is to put a 1x1 one one round stud into the big hole at the back of the ZX armor like this. And besides putting bamboo hats on you can do so much more. You can attach a 1x1 one one clip to the back of the ZX armor and you can now add so many things to it. Scythe, staff, hammer, and any other weapons that exist in the Ninjago universe. Instead of a 1x1 one one clip, you could also attach this round stud with a small stick thing protruding out. You can add shurikens or a jade blade and this butterfly knife that Kozu really likes. The best part is you can still put swords in even with this 1x1 one one stud and if you want to be fancy, you could put some kind of an emblem to cover the swords like this round Lloyd emblem. This looks pretty cool. Remember this really classic set from 2012, the Rattlecopter? Well Kai has his jetpack but he doesn't have his ZX armor. Well this 1x1 one one stud building technique can make it possible. I'm going to make my own version of the jetpack with this shark army weapon and some stud shooters. And to go along with that I'm going to make my own Kai ZX. With the energy Kai head wrap, legacy Kai torso and this ZX armor piece. I don't have a gold ZX armor so I'm just going to use this silver one. Put the stud in and boom, the jetpack now fits onto the armor. Of course if you do this your minifigures will get really thick but from the front and back it looks really cool and a lot like the shows. If you think the square clip looks really bad you can replace the 1x1 one one stud with another 1x1 one one stud with the hole in the middle then just put in this claw thing into it and it looks a lot more compact. You can also put this short stick into the ZX armor and you can fit two shurikens onto it so Zane can really get into the action. Remember that strange round piece earlier with the small stick protruding out of it? You can actually fit that thing into the hole. I couldn't come up with a lot of applications for this except that you can carry around a half mask and wrap around the nunchucks of lightning in a really weird way. If you have any ideas, do let me know in the comments. And for my final idea, I'm going to try and upgrade Kozu. Kozu has great protection on his upper torso, but look at his bottom torso. His arms don't have any protection. One problem a lot of Ninjago fans face has to do with the golden weapons. In the TV show, the ninja carried them on their backs, but the minifigures couldn't do so. The ZX armor piece, this thing right here, was designed to only carry swords. But in this video, I'm going to show you how much more you can do with this simple piece. Starting with the shurikens of ice. Get a stud with a hole and this very tiny claw piece. Stick the stud in the back of the armor piece and the claw in the stud. Then get the crest from Samurai X's helmet which is also a bucket handle. Attach the crest to the claw and with these two open prongs here you can slot one shuriken on each and then secure it by pushing it downwards. Now Zane can carry two shurikens around and I gotta say I'll be doing my Zane figures like this from now on. You can even rotate it so if you wanted to do what Zane does from season 11 onwards you can. Now in one of my previous videos I said that you should put your swords in the ZX armor with the edge facing outwards instead of downwards. 
And um, I think I made some people upset. No, he can't do this. He already did. So I like to say that, you know, it really doesn't matter which way you put them in. There are good reasons to do it both ways. And I don't think Lego even cares. Like, check out Mr. E and Hunted right before he dies. His swords aren't even mirror images. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. Just do what you like. <coughs> Apart from Ninjago Katanas, you can also put a Lego dagger piece in the ZX armor. You could use a generic one or the official Ninjago one. I don't have either, so just take a look at these high quality images. Now take a look at this stab out set. The instructions literally tell you to put a pirate sword into this scabbard piece, which was originally made for katanas. Pirate swords are thinner than katanas, so if katanas can fit in ZX armor pieces, then so can these pirate swords. Next, here are some really weird things you can do with ZX armor pieces. I tried making a toilet bowl with some white pieces, and for the whole, I used a silver ZX armor piece. It's really loose, but it works. Also, I took the same assembly and modified it. If you flip the armor piece and add a dish piece, you now have a fancy looking wash basin. Okay, now this is how minifigures usually wear ZX armor pieces, but you don't have to always do it like this. You can flip the piece around so that now your figure has a really long neck and you have an anti stud connection at the back. I'm not sure how this would be useful. Lots of things fit into the ZX armor piece, like this, and this, and this, and this, and this. That's right, minifigure heads also fit into the armor. This would be perfect if you're trying to recreate this scene from Crystallized, where Pixel carries the Ice Emperor on her backpack. If you add a stud with a hole, you can carry fruits around, like an apple, banana, and cherries. Now before I show you how to attach the nunchucks of lightning to the ZX armor, here are some of your ideas from the previous video. You can take the base of an antenna piece and flip it around. Once you push it into the armor, you now have an anti-stud connection. I guess you could then attach a surfboard or something. If you flip a ZX armor piece around and put a blue stud in it, it looks like an extended arc reactor from Iron Man. I don't have a gold one, so I'll just make a custom war machine. First Marvel figure on the channel, actually. You can insert an emblem directly into the armor too and fit a sword inside, without having to put a stud. Also, if you have these LEGO Batman pieces, well, they have studs that fit directly into the armor too. And finally, let's get to the nunchucks of lightning. In the previous video, my solution was to make this assembly with a pin and a stud with a hole to get an anti-stud connection and then wrap the nunchucks around the figure. But this is a terrible way to do it. Instead, we can use the assembly from the beginning of the video with Samurai X's crest. Lego chains have seven sections and the crest is actually small enough to fit through the sections of the nunchucks. So if you slot the nunchucks onto the crest at sections 2 and 6 here, you've just managed to store the nunchucks in a very compact way. The nunchucks can hang from Jay's armor just like in the show. I'm really proud of this discovery. I've made two videos about this before, but I personally own only four separate ZX armor pieces. The problem is that they're all in silver. For this next trick, I need a golden ZX armor piece, so I went looking for one. So I was actually at school and I found the Golden Dragon from 2013 and I was able to track down the owners of the set and I found the Golden Lloyd figure that comes with it. Can I borrow this? Yes. You know, actually holding this figure that came out 10 years ago is pretty cool. For those who don't know, this figure came from Season 2 of Ninjago when Lloyd became the Golden Ninja. Ah! But enough messing around because we're really here for his golden ZX armor piece. I'm going to make a quick Kai ZX custom which is his suit from seasons 1 to 2 and has a golden armor piece. And I found that if you attach a stud in a clip, you can actually attach his signature weapon, the Sword of Fire, to Kai's armor piece. Which is pretty cool because that's how Kai carries it around in the show and it's something Ninjago fans have been struggling with for a while. But what else can I do with the ZX armor piece? Well besides carrying swords, how about a crossbow? which is really a bow and arrow that's more convenient and was used in medieval times. But did you know that Zayn actually used one for a brief period in Ninjago Season 13? So if you wanted to, you could use a stud with a hole and slot the crossbow handle into it to make your minifigures carry the crossbow around. But if that's not to your liking, you could even attach it with a clip at the main frame of the bow to make it more show accurate and practical. Speaking of which, you can also take Lloyd's Season 8 sword and clip it at the point of the blade nearest to the hilt using the same ZX armor technique. Okay, but this is actually really thick and, ex and it extends too far out. If I were a ninja, I wouldn't be able to be stealthy in this. So here's a more compact ZX armor trick. 
If you take a pair of LEGO binoculars and attach it to the armor piece using a single stud, it kind of looks like a jetpack that the Mandalorians use. And you can even attach two fire pieces to make it look like it's flying. There has to be more we can do with this piece though, like maybe using it for some actual LEGO builds. Well I came up with this four sided table thing that uses snot bricks to hold up jumper plates on each side. And if you attach a ZX armor piece on each side, it looks quite cool, like a pedestal or fancy base support. You could use it as a charging station for a robot or a display stand for something really valuable maybe. Moving on, do you remember that scene from Ninjago Season 2 when the ninjas slot their elemental blades into keyholes to unlock the golden mech at the Temple of Light? Well, you could use a ZX armor piece to make that keyhole and it even fits a dragon hilt. And now, for our final ZX armor trick. I figured that you could slot a piece of string through the hole in the back of the ZX armor piece. If you then inserted a ninja sword, it would hold the string pretty tightly. This would be good if you need to put some stoppers on your strings to hold it in place somewhere. Wait, let me turn on the lights. Yes, it works, and it's just something cool I thought of. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for 10,000 subscribers. Head over to the community tab and leave a comment about any ZX armor tricks you might have. I've made two videos before about this, so do check them out if you haven't. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.